up guys jc once again back on audio video for you guys today welcome to my first video of 2020 really excited to be here once again today's video is going to be a massive movie haul video i've been picking up a lot of films over the last three or four months i actually meant to do this before christmas but i got really busy and got a little tied up with things so here i am today very excited to be here a lot of pick movies over the last few months, uh, 4Ks, Blu-rays, Steelbooks, Digibooks, Criterion, Arrow, the list really goes on. So as I said, very excited to show you guys everything that I picked up. As always, leave your comments below and let's get started with this massive movie haul video. So the first pile here, just a pile of Amorays, standard Blu-ray Amorays that I picked up from a variety of different companies. First one here is Booksmart. I believe this was from Best Buy uh, during the Black Friday sales. Thanks to my boy Trini for hooking me up with some of these titles. Nice slip cover here as well. This is just one of those sort of standard coming of age female movies. A lot of these type of movies come out over the last couple of years. You know, Lady Bird, Eighth Grade. This one probably a little bit better, a little bit more comedic. Uh, certainly not as good as Mean Girls. That was probably my favorite of this type of genre, but it has a few laughs and I'll probably rewatch this some time down the road. That is Booksmart. Next one here is Clockers. I got this one from JB Hi-Fi. Uh, been trying to get into a bit more Spike Lee recently. I watched Do The Right Thing on Criterion. I really enjoyed Black Klansman that came out last year as well. This one I really enjoy. Great sort of drama, crime, gang film. It's got a Harvey Keitel, John Totoro. Delroy Lindo as well was really good in this movie. And I can see me coming back to this one down the road. I uh, watched this a couple of weeks ago. And as I said, trying to get into Spike Lee a little bit more. Love my drama crime films. That is Clockers. I think that one's actually coming out on Kino Lorber as well. Next one, got this one really cheaply. Been meaning to get this one for quite a while actually. And that is Coming to America with Eddie Murphy. Watched this one many years ago on TV and I couldn't really remember it, so I did re-watch it around Christmas time and I had a lot of good laughs of it. You know, I think this is Eddie Murphy in his prime, I believe. One of his better ones and great time. That is coming to America. Next film, another sort of uh, comedy, rom-com sort of thing. Uh, that is Crazy Rich Asians. This movie came out a couple of years ago and again, had a lot of fun with it. Nothing too seriously, just easy watching and maybe watch with your date or whatever. Uh, just fun to kind of movie. That is Crazy Rich Asians. Next movie, I highly recommend this movie. This was one of my favorites from last year. I think it was in my top 20 list. That is Fighting With My Family, a great comedy sort of based on a true story about a female wrestler. It's got a really great cast. You got uh, Nick Frost in here. You got Vince Vaughn, uh, Fl Florence Poe, who's done a lot of good movies recently, sort of an up and coming actress. You saw her in Midsommar and also Little Woman. So yeah, just a fun film. And it's got The Rock in there, of course, as well. Just a bit of fanfare, but yeah, great movie. A lot of good laughs and based on a true story, I believe. That is Fighting With My Family. Next movie, we talk a lot about this guy on uh, streams, private streams, Steven Seagal that is. I uh, love my action movies and that is Hard to Kill. And this is probably one of his better movies. I always say with the guys, he's probably done about five or six really good ones. And this is certainly one of them. This has got Kelly Le LeBrock. I think I watched this one a couple of years ago and I really loved it. Love my action films. And you know, some of these cheesy Seagal movies are just fun, easy watching. So that's Hard to Kill. Next one, I gotta thank my boy again, uh, Trini, for sending me this one. I, I love the movie The Departed with, uh, directed by Martin Scorsese, and this is actually the original, the Chinese version, Infernal Affairs, and this was a really good movie. I watched this a couple of weeks ago. Probably not as good as The Departed, but I still had a lot of fun with it. I love these sort of crime dramas, and I need to check out more of the director's work because I haven't seen a lot of it. But this was a really great movie, and as I said, if you love The Departed, you're gonna like this one. That is Infernal Affairs. So thanks to Trini once again. Next movie, I actually only watched this movie yesterday. Um, that is Judy uh, with Renee Zellweger. And this is getting a lot of Oscar buzz. This is all about the famous actress, the young child actress, Judy Garland, who was in The Wizard of Oz. And everyone's seen The Wizard of Oz by now. So it's a bit of a biopic, really good stuff. I think Renee Zellweger is definitely gonna win the Oscars, which are coming up this weekend. Um, Really great performance, and if you like The Wizard of Oz and Julie Garland in general and want to know more about her story, this is a great movie to check out. So I highly recommend Judy. Next film, just another one of a comedy, silly comedy, that is Longshot. Another movie that came out last year with Seth Rogen and Charlie Theron. And if you're into movies like, you know, um, Knocked Up and 40 Year Old Version, you're going to enjoy this one. I think this is personally one of my favorite Seth Rogen films of the last couple of years, and Charlie Theron has had a good time in this. 
Nothing to be taken too seriously, but a fun sort of Hong Kong film. That is long shot. Uh, next movie, I've been wanting to get this one for quite a while and finally did. That is Molly's Game. This one came out a couple of years ago with Jessica Chastain and my boy Edis Elba. Again, it's based on a true story and I like any movie that's kind of based on poker and this is what a lot of this movie is based on. So any poker film like 21, uh, Rounders was a good one as well. A lot of fun with this movie. Uh, Jessica Chastain, definitely one of her better films in my opinion. And yeah, looking forward to re-watching this at some point. That is Molly's Game. Next movie, maybe not a lot of people have heard about this one. This one actually just got released at JB Hi-Fi and Blu-ray not that long ago. I don't know if it's got a worldwide release, but it's a good film. Mr. Holland's Opus, uh, starring Richard Dreyfuss, who made fame for Jaws. Uh, this movie is kind of a little bit like Dead, Dead Poet Society and Whiplash in a way, because he's a music teacher. He comes to the school to teach music and he sort of inspires students and things like that. So it's a really good film. Great performance by Richard Dreyfuss. Been wanting to watch this one for a while. I watched it uh, many years ago and I really loved it and was really excited that JB put this out on Blu-ray. So looking forward to checking it out again, Mr. Holland's Opus. Next one was another movie that I saw some of the guys, uh, Robbie, Voodoo Magic, Jack Attack, they really love this movie. It's one, it's, I think it was one of their favorites of 2019. So had to watch it. It is The Nightingale and this is a really good film. So it's the same director as The Babadook, which I know some people didn't like, but this is a lot better than that. It's sort of a mystical revenge movie. Uh, it's set in the 1800s, I believe. It's about an Irish convict and a, a husband and baby get killed um, and she goes out for vengeance. So it's really good. She sort of teams up with a tracker, uh, Aboriginal Indigenous tracker, and have a really good bond together. They form this really good bond. And yeah, it's a really great movie. Great Australian film set in Tasmania, I believe. So yeah, really powerful stuff. And I highly recommend this one, The Nightingale. Uh, next movie, a lot of buzz about this movie. I know a lot of people, everyone that's probably watching this has seen it and loves this film. That is Parasite. This movie just got released here a couple of days ago. And as I said, getting a lot of Oscar buzz. One of the best foreign films of all time, a lot of people are saying. It's obviously based in South Korea. Um, as many of you guys know, I love my Korean films. Been watching a lot over the last couple of years. And this is certainly up there. I believe it's gonna win quite a few Oscars, three or four, I believe. Great film, very original and uh, Definitely check out a lot more of this director's stuff. That's uh, Bong Song Ho. Done a lot of good movies. The Host, I believe. He also did Okja. And I think Memories of Murder, I believe, as well, which is a really good one. So, yeah, I hope Parasite does get a few awards, like Screenplay and maybe Best Director. Who knows? Maybe even Best Picture. We'll see in a couple of days. But, yeah, highly recommend this film for those who haven't seen it. I, I really was sort of last on the boat with this movie. Everyone else had seen it, told me to keep watching it. I delayed it for a while, but I finally did. And yeah, it was a great film. So really happy to finally have this in my collection. That is Parasite. Next movie was another one I really enjoyed from last year. I believe this was in my top five. That is Peanut Butter Falcon. Uh, great film. Uh, this was so good. Shia LaBeouf. He's really the master of indie movies recently. This one and Honey Boy, which I'll probably get at some point, really come of age, Shia, and I really think he fits well in these indie genre movies. Uh, great film, uh, introducing Zach Gottstein, who was played the disabled boy in this. It's all about a journey. Uh, as I said, this disabled guy goes on this journey because he wants to become a wrestler, and he sort of teams up with Shia, who's on the run from something else. and. Dakota Johnson plays the sort of social worker type thing, Kara, um, really hot. You know, I love my Dakota. So yeah, great film. One of the sweetest films of the decade, it says here. And I really believe that. I had a great time. I can't wait to rewatch this at some point. Got this one from Amazon, got the nice slip cover. So yeah, highly recommend this to anyone. I've been trying to get a lot of people in my uh, sort of real life, people I see all the time to watch it because I think they'll like it. So yeah, that's Peanut Butter Falcon one is another one that I've been wanting to get in my collection for quite a while that is Strangers on the Train and this is certainly one of my favorite Hitchcock films you know he's done a lot of great films I love Psycho, Vertigo, Rear Window but this is really up there in my opinion maybe a little bit underrated compared to those ones but such a great sort of story about two strangers that meet on a train as the title says and it kind of goes from there bit of a crime mystery drama and yeah as I said Hitchcock has that great suspense style that he does and um, really up there in my opinion is one of Hitchcock's very best that are the strangers on the train 
Next one is another Eddie Murphy movie that I got uh, a little while ago as well with Dan Aykroyd, Trading Places. And I had a lot of good fun with this one. I actually hadn't seen this one before until a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, a lot of good fun. I enjoyed both in this movie. Eddie Murphy was great, as was Dan Aykroyd. Probably enjoyed this one a little bit more than Coming to America, but it was made around the same time and a lot of memorable moments in this one as well. You got Dermot Elliott in here who plays the butler, who is a great actor in my opinion, and also Jamie Lee Curtis. So yeah, great, great cast and just a lot of good fun. That is Trading Places. Uh, next one is another one that came out last year, and surprisingly I really enjoyed this movie, uh, Vice. I don't really enjoy a lot of these political type movies because most of the time they're quite boring, but this one was quite endearing. It had a lot, uh, lot more interest for me, a uh, lot well paced in my opinion, really well edited, and Christian Bale played a really good Dick Cheney. He really gets into the character really well. as. Christian Bale does, a great supporting cast. You've got Steve Carell, Amy Adams, and Sam Rockwell as well, who played, I think, George Bush, I believe. Yeah, just a really good uh, movie about a man who was quite uh, deceitful and quite a horrible person, um, Dick Cheney, for all those in America who know all about politics and stuff like that. So, yeah, good film, and I'll probably rewatch this at some point. That is Vice. And then the last one of the Amurai pile, this one is another one that I wanted to watch for quite a while and I finally did. That is the original Wicker Man. This actually just came out recently, the final cut and the classic remastered edition. So really excited to have this. I actually really enjoyed the Nicolas Cage uh, version of this and I'm always a big fan of Christopher Lee so I'm glad I finally watched it. Great film, a great sort of cult movie. As you guys know, I'm not huge into horror but I did enjoy this one quite a bit. It's got Brick Eklund in there, who was also in The Man with the Golden Gun with Christopher Lee. Um, good cast, Edward Wood, Edward Woodward as well. Interesting name. So there you go, the original Wicker Man. So very happy to have that. So now we'll move on to we'll move on to the Arrow video because I think they had a sell around October where they had to buy one, get one free, something like that. So naturally, I took advantage of that. So I'll show you the Arrow video titles. First one here is Black Moon Rising, which stars Tommy Lee Jones and Linda Hamilton from Terminator fame. This one was okay, it's sort of one of those sort of science fiction heist crime films. Uh, nothing spectacular, but it's nice to see Tommy Lee Jones in some of these earlier movies, because I hadn't seen a lot of his earlier work. And you know, Linda Hamilton, this was, as I said, from Terminator fame, she was good in it. Uh, nothing too special, but a lot of fun and a very sort of cheesy sort of soundtrack, very 80s. So there you go, Black Moon Rising. So the next one I've been wanting to get for quite a while, uh, I think they actually re-listed uh, this or whatever, that is Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia, starring Warren Oates. This is actually directed by Sam Peckinpah, and I'm a big fan of his, of course, he did The Wild Bunch, Pat Garrett, Billy the Kid, Major Dundee, just to name a few, and this was a really, really good film. Uh, it's about a guy, sort of a bit of a drifter, and he ends up involved in this sort of Mexican gang and they're after this guy called Alfredo Garcia so he kind of goes on a manhunt for him because he wants to get a reward and everything else. Yeah really good film, uh, Warren Oates such a good actor and he did a lot of good films with Sam Peckinpah so I highly recommend this film Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. Next movie, a uh, really, really trippy film. This is another one that came out last year, and I know my boy Hoax really enjoyed this one, and that is Climax, uh, directed by Gaspar Noe, who did the film Love and a lot of other crazy films. Breaking Ways, I believe, as well, and this is definitely a trip, no doubt about it. It's an acid trip, it's a crazy sort of horror, uh, devil hell sort of film I don't really know what to say um, you might want to take a little bit of something for doing this I don't know if you're into that type of stuff but hey it is one wild ride that is climax definitely watch this at least once uh, next one was another movie I watched during Halloween I'm glad I did and I'm glad I actually bought this one that is Eaten Alive directed by Toby Hooper who did uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre the original which I really love I really enjoyed this one. It's about a uh, sort of guy who owns this motel. He's a weird sort of guy. He also owns like a pet crocodile and it's just nuts. It really is. All these people come to this sort of weird motel and this guy is crazy. He really is. And as I said, the alligator or the crocodile, whatever it is in, in there. And it's nuts, great slasher film and really enjoyable. That is Eaten Alive. 
And then another sort of horror movie that I watched during Halloween and picked up, uh, that is Horror Express with two very famous British actors. You got Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing who were in a lot of Hammer Horror films together. You also got a uh, guest appearance of Telly Savalas, which I always enjoy a bit of telly. And this is an interesting sort of film. It's a bit of sci-fi action, um, not action sort of horror drama in a way. It's sort of a little bit like The Thing because they come across this sort of um, creature that's been like buried for a while and they sort of, um, the archaeologist guy, Christopher Lee, wants to take it back for studies and then it comes alive in this train, has all these sort of supernatural powers. So it's really interesting, um, really good film and kept me going. Love Peter Cushion, he's always good in these type of films. So highly recommend it if you haven't. That is The Horror Express. And then another movie that came out last year, a very dark, depressing tone. Uh, this is quite hard hitting, uh, and that is Lords of Chaos. Really good film about a Norwegian sort of black metal band, uh, but it's a lot more than that. It's quite disturbing, very dark, and not for the faint hearted, that's for sure, but really good acting by um, Macaulay Culkin's brother, I believe, Rory Culkin. Haven't seen him in a lot, but he was great in this. And Emery Cohen's in this one as well. You've seen him in Place Beyond the Pines and also um, Hot Summer's Night. He always plays the villain, and again, he's the villain in this one. So, really good film, and you've got to watch it at least once. And I've heard the Arrow video transfer is really nice. So that is Lords of Chaos. And then the last set here from Arrow Video, I got this one, really happy to finally own this one because as I mentioned earlier, I've got into Korean films a lot over the last few years. So this is the Vengeance Trilogy box set from Arrow. Haven't opened it of course, and this comes with all three Vengeance films by Park Chan-wook, very famous Korean director. Obviously he did All Boy, but he also did two other films in this Vengeance Trilogy called Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance and Lady Vengeance. Really good film, powerful stuff, violent stuff as well. But uh, as I said, if you're getting into Korean films, All Boy is definitely the first sort of step. That one and I Saw the Devil, and then you'll probably enjoy the other two of these films. Great stuff and really happy to have this limited edition box set. So there it is, the Vengeance Trilogy from Arrow Video. So I got that. Okay, what am I gonna do next? Well, I might as well show these these three box set as well. These are all three from Eureka Masters of Cinema. Um, first one here is the African Queen uh, with Humphrey Bogart and Catherine Hepburn. And as you guys know, I like my film noirs. I've always been a pretty big Humphrey Bogart fan. I've got into him a lot over the last couple of years. Obviously, I love Casablanca, The Treasure of Sarah Madre, In a Lonely Place, Maltese Falcon, the list goes on. This was a really good film, and when I saw that there was a set for this, I had to get it, because I actually only own this movie on DVD. So, yeah, really nice set. I haven't opened it yet, but yeah, it comes with a booklet and the movie, of course, and I'm sure the master restoration is great. Great film, great chemistry between both classic actor and actress, African Queen, there you go. And then as I said, I already had a copy of this movie on Kina Lorba, but I had to get this one on Masters of Cinema as well. That is A Fistful of Dynamite or Duck You Sucker. It's got two titles. Obviously one of the great Mexican revolutionary films directed by Sergio Leone after the Dollars Trilogy and Once Upon a Time in the West. This is a great film starring Rod Steiger and James Coburn, two really good actors in my opinion. Um, had a great time with this movie. You've got a, such a great Inyo Morricone soundtrack. As I said, if you love the Dollars Trilogy, you love Sergio Leone's style, you're gonna enjoy this one a lot. This one probably has a bit more comedic elements compared to those ones, but yeah, great time. And if you love some dynamite and explosions, you'll definitely enjoy this one. Fistful of Dynamite or Duck You Sucker. And then another Western that I've talked about, I think I showed this one on a stream or whatever, that is High Noon, which also came out in Eureka. And this is a classic Western. For all those getting into the genre, you've got to watch this one and buy it. Starring the legendary Gary Cooper and Grace Kelly. This is just a Western persona. It really is. It's what the genre really def is defined. I uh, got a great set here with another booklet and movie and really looking forward to watching this because again, I actually only had this on DVD, so really nice update and happy to have this in my collection. That is high noon. So that's a couple of sets there. Um, and now, so the next section here is just a bundle of 4K, uh, just 4Ks and 4K box sets and things like that. So the first one here I got was uh, Angel Heart. Been wanting to watch this one movie for quite a while. This is actually the Classics Remastered Edition. Uh, this actually only came out a couple of months ago. This is starring Mickey Rourke and Robert De Niro, also Lisa Bonet, one of her first movies. 
And this was a really good one. Loved Robert De Niro's performance as the devil, or Lucifer. He had sort of a special guest appearance. This was really good Mickey Rourke performance as well. It's sort of like a drama, horror type film. Don't really want to give too much away because it's one of those movies, if you know too much, it's going to spoil it for you because it has a really twist sort of ending. But it's pretty violent and quite horrific in a way, but I uh, really enjoyed it. That is Angel Heart. Now, I think everyone's pretty much showed this set on their updates, but I had to do it. Um, this one obviously got really cheap from Amazon. That is Apocalypse Now, um, the Final Cut version. And this comes with all versions of the film as pretty much, I'm sure you guys have seen by now, everyone's got this. I'm a big fan of this movie. It's probably one of my favorite war movies of all time. Francis Ford Coppola, one of Martin Sheen's best movies. Of course, the legendary Marlon Brando in this. Uh, really happy to have this set if you're a big fan of this movie you definitely gotta have this set as it comes with all versions i actually haven't even watched the final cut version yet but i will very soon just a very long i think it's over about three hours three and a half so yeah classic war film one of the best and have to have in your collection that is apocalypse now and then I finally got this, I think JB had a better 30% off sale of one day and I had to go in there after work and pick it up and I don't know why I got this, but I had to. That is the Batman uh, box set with all four films from 1989 and 1997. So the two Tim Burton films and also the two Joe Schumacher films. And I've always been a fan of these uh, movies. I really have. I love Batman 89. It's one of my favorites of all time. Uh, you know, Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson as a Joker. I've watched that movie to death. I, Batman Returns has always grown on me over time. Batman Forever has really always been a guilty pleasure movie. Um, I loved it when I was a kid. You know, Jim Carrey as the Riddler and also Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face. And Batman and Robin, you know, a lot of hate for it, but I don't mind it too much, so you know, I had to get. I've had these movies on Blu-ray, so I didn't really need this, but you know, the 4K upgrade, and I think the Blu-rays have been updated as well. So whatever, I got the box set now, so I probably don't need to get these movies again on physical media. But there you go, Batman box set. And then another one here. This one came out last year, I think early last year, and there's another one from Best Buy. Um, so thanks to Trini for this. Uh, Cold Pursuit with Liam Neeson. As most of you guys know, Liam Neeson's done a lot of action movies over the last few years. You know, Taken, uh, Nonstop, um, Run All Night. Uh, this one was a little bit different. Um, there was a lot of action, of course, but there's a little bit more darker, comedic, quirky in a way. Um, I didn't really enjoy it on first watch, but I do want to give it another go. I actually did see this one in cinema, and I'm a pretty big Liam Neeson fan, so I will this, I will give this one another go and see what I think of it next time. That is Cold Pursuit. And then another one that I did see at the start of last year at the cinemas, that is Glass. That is part of the M. Light Shyamalan trilogy, you know, Unbreakable and also Split. I didn't think this one was as good as those two, in my opinion, probably the weakest out of the trilogy, but it was okay. You know, James McAvoy is really good in this. Um, Bruce Willis, nice to see him. And also Samuel Jackson. Um, so if you're a fan of those movies, um, you'll enjoy this one. It's all right, it's sort of middle of the road for me, but that is glass. And then I had to get this set because I was a huge fan of this movie. This is my second favorite movie of last year. Um, as you know, my favorite director of all time, Quentin Tarantino. So I did get the Once Upon a Time set from Amazon. The collector's edition comes with like a magazine. I think it comes with a vinyl, uh, obviously the 4K Blu-ray, um, some posters as well. So really nice set. I haven't even opened it. As I said, really big fan of this movie. Um, probably not one of Tarantino's very best, but still great. I know it's going to get a few Oscars on Sunday. And uh, yeah, Leo, really good performance. Brad Pitt, probably one of his best performances in a long time. And obviously the Australian bombshell actress, Margot Robbie, good performance as Sharon Tate. This really personifies Hollywood in the 60s and the growing of cinema. And Tarantino, as always, does a great job. So really happy to have this set. I know it's limited now, so hopefully you guys who are a fan of this movie did grab this because it is limited. That is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Great set there. And then I picked up, uh, again, I think this one was from the Black Friday sale. Uh, that is Rambo. This is the fourth one in the Rambo franchise. I always really enjoyed this one. This one is certainly more violent and darker than the previous three Rambo films. Obviously, First Blood is always my favorite, but I have enjoyed this as I've watched it over the years. Uh, as I said, set in Burma, I believe. Rambo, very violent, and I had a lot of fun with it, and never can go wrong with Stallone. So that is Rambo, the fourth one in the franchise. 
And then of course, I had to get the recent one, which came out last year, um, Rambo Last Blood on 4K Blu-ray. Uh, a lot of people didn't like this one, but I did. Um, always been a fan, as I said, of this franchise. They get a little bit more violent than even the fourth one. Um, you know, some people said it was a Mexican cartel and all that, not really politically correct or whatever. Again, it's just a movie, it's just fun, violent. And if you love Rambo, you're gonna enjoy this one. So that is Rambo Last Blood. And then of course, I got this one. This one I think was must have been around October. And as many of you guys know, I'm a big fan of this movie. I love Al Pacino. He's one of my favorite actors of all time. And this one movie is actually my top 10 of all time. And I did get the Scarface set. Um, the limited collector's set, which comes with this plastic statue. The world is yours, of course. Famous line in the movie. Um, of course, love Scarface, and this is just the 4K Blu-ray. I think it's a remastered Blu-ray, which is good for me as well, and uh, really looking forward to seeing this in the best quality possible. Again, it's a movie that I probably won't need to buy again now on physical media. Um, I said, I've seen this movie so many times. We quote it all the time on the Hangouts, so yeah, really happy to have this set, and this is just a nice thing to have on your desk or whatever. Uh, maybe unnecessary, but hey, got it and happy to have it. That is Scarface. And then another movie that came out, I think around Halloween last year, and I finally got it, the upgraded version, the 4K Blu-ray remastered of The Shining. And yeah, this movie has really grown on me over time. I usually watch this movie every year around Halloween. I love Jack Nicholson. You know, he did a lot of great movies in the mid 70s and early 80s, and this is certainly one of them. This is obviously directed by Stanley Kubrick. A uh, great horror film, a classic, and um, yeah, love it. And this remastered version is fantastic. So definitely buy it if you can. I'm sure this one's not limited. It's probably still very much available. So if you're a fan of The Shining and want to see it remastered, grab this copy, The Shining. And then the last of the 4Ks, uh, we've got uh, Us, a movie directed by Jordan Peele, who obviously did Get Out, the very famous Get Out, which I really enjoyed. Probably a little bit more than Us. This is the one that came out sort of middle of last year. It's a horror thriller. Um, still really good though. I thought it was quite entertaining. Um, somewhat original in a way. It was a little bit more predictable than Get Out, but I still had a lot of good time with it. And I'm sure I'll probably rewatch it maybe around Halloween this year. So that is Us. Again, this one was from Best Buy, so thanks for the slip. Okay, so moving on from there, and now we'll move on to, okay, some Criterions and Digibooks. So I think this one I got during the November Criterion sale on Amazon. I got a really good deal on this, and that is the Before Trilogy. I've been wanting to watch these movies for quite a while, and I'm really happy to finally own this set. Obviously, these films directed by Richard Linklater and starring um, Ethan Hawke and uh, Julie Delpy. And it's a really fascinating trilogy because it's all set uh, apart in years and all made actually uh, years apart. So it's about this uh, guy and girl that meet on a train, the young, the teenagers, you know, everything in front of them. And they have, they form this sort of bond. And during this period they meet in, um, uh, where is it now? Is it Turkey or Austria? Something like that. One of these European countries, I just can't remember. And they form like a chemistry and a connection and, that's the first movie, you know, they just go around this town talking about themselves, their relationships and love and everything else. And then they say goodbye. And then the next movie is sort of them reconnecting again years later, um, which is kind of interesting because Ethan Hawke by then is like a famous author and she's just kind of working and that, this was in Paris, I believe. And then the third film, again, they sort of separate and you don't know what happens and they sort of maybe get together. And then by the third one, they actually are together and they're married, they have kids and stuff. And um, yeah, it's very interesting. So it's sort of like the showing of how someone falls in love and maybe falls out of love and how they keep a relationship going. It's a really good movie, um, movies, I should say. Um, Richard Linklater, obviously, I think this is better than Boyhood in my opinion and a really nice trilogy to have on Criterion. So there's the before trilogy. Next one, I actually haven't watched this. Um, maybe I will by the time this gets uploaded. That is Failsafe. This is a criterion that just came out a couple of weeks ago. It's actually directed by Sidney Lumet, who's done a lot of good movies. Um, 12 Angry Men, Network, Dog Day Afternoon, just to name a few. This star is Henry Fonda, which I'm a big fan of. Walter Mayhew's obviously in this as well. I think this is all like Cold War, sort of political movie. Very much in the same way as uh, Doctor Strangelove. I think it's somewhat similar to that. That's what I've heard, I haven't seen it. So really looking forward to it. Usually always have a, a good time with Sidney Lumet's films, so I'm sure I will. That is Falsafe. 
And then the other Criterion here that I did get, this is another one that got released in uh, late January, uh, that is The Fugitive Kind, uh, another movie by Sidney Lumet. Um, really enjoyed this one. Uh, this stars obviously the very famous Marlon Brando, and I'm obviously a big fan of his. This is actually based on a Tennessee Williams play, so I actually had the DVD of this and I watched it a couple of years ago now, so I'm really glad they put this on Criterion. Uh, certainly if you're a fan of Brando, you're going to enjoy this one. It's a good drama and highly recommend it. So that is The Fugitive Kind. So as I said, we've got two uh, Sydney Lumet films there. And then this one I got from Trini, so thanks very much again, man. Uh, this is an indicator title, Jack Nicholson in The Border. Um, this is a really good film. I think he did this around um, after One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. A lot of good movies in that, that sort of period. Uh, obviously, star, also stars Harvey Keitel, another really good actor. And this is all about, he's a border security guard and he has to keep people out. And yeah, you know, Jack Nicholson has that sort of charisma, that personality. He's always good in these films. So this is a really good one. Great indicator set, I um, believe it has a nice booklet in there as well, so always good to have these indicator titles in the collection, so glad to have the border, thanks to Trini. And then we come on to a few digibooks, and this movie, I've been wanting to get this one for such a long time, um, you know, a lot of guys in the hangout will know all about it, this is Paul Newman in The Hustler. And as you guys know, I'm a really big Paul Newman fan. I love a lot of his movies. Cool Hand Luke, Bush Cassidy and Sundance Kid, Hard, uh, The Sting. Um, this is certainly one up there as well. You know, I love sports movies. I love anything that involves competition or anything like that. Obviously, this movie deals with um, all in the pool hall and this guy called Fast Eddie Felsen, sort of an up and coming brash pool player. And he has this epic match with uh, Jackie Gleason. Uh, nicknamed Minnesota Fats in the movie. It's got a great cast. You also got um, George C. Scott in this, Pippa Laurie. Uh, I think she was in a few Hitchcock films. Yeah, just a really good film. And obviously the sequel to this is Color of Money, which was directed by Martin Scorsese, uh, which is another really good film that I highly recommend. But yeah, I love this movie to bits. I'm really happy to have the Digi book. Um, got this one on eBay for a pretty good price. I think this one might be limited now, so yeah, if you haven't got it, uh, maybe get it on some other version, but yeah, love The Hustler, so there you go. Then another really good movie that I'm really happy to have on uh, Digibook as well, that is my man James Dean and Rebel Without a Cause, obviously directed by Nicholas Ray, one of his better movies. Obviously, whoever, I mean, most people might know, but James Dean obviously had a very tragic life, was a really good up-and-coming actor, and only did fil uh, three films before uh, he tragically died in a car accident. Uh, yeah, he did um, East of Eden, Giant, and this one. This is probably his best out of the three that he made. This also stars Natalie Wood, a really famous uh, sort of female actress in the time as well. She also had a tragic uh, end to her life early as well so yeah it's a really good film it's all about a guy he's sort of a rebel you know coming in high school it's just it's sort of like a little bit like american graffiti in a way it has that sort of style and james dean just fantastic it's just a shame i'm sure he would have had a lot of good movies um ahead of him if he did uh, live on so yeah great film and i'm really happy to have the digi book of this one rebel about a cause and then another film that I'm really happy about the Digibook as well, because this one's uh, totally out of print. I was really lucky. I just went on eBay one night and there it was for a really cheap price. This is uh, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, the anniversary edition, obviously starring the very famous Betty Davis and Joan Crawford. And this is kind of like a psychological horror in the same vein as Misery a little bit. Um, yeah, fantastic film, great actresses there, just really, really good stuff. And um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to get this version anymore, but uh, Warner Archive actually released the Blu-ray of this not that long ago, so you'll be able to get it there. But yeah, really nice set to have. And yeah, this is a fantastic film. And if you're getting into like older films, you know, black and white films, I put this one high up there. So there you go, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. So that's that. And now we come on to the last pile here, which is uh, still books. So we've got the still books now. Um, the first one here, again, thanks to Trini, because he got this one from the Black Friday Best Buy sales, um, Casino on 4K. And obviously I'm a pretty big fan of this movie. Love my Martin Scorsese, Robert De Niro. Actually, I'm more of a fan of this than Goodfellas, so don't tell Paul that, but uh, yeah. There you go, really nice still book there. The three main characters in the movie, you know, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, and Sharon Stone. Um, yeah, great film, and really happy to have the 4K still book of that one. So there you go. 
Now I've got the 4K Blu-ray, this one, great film, Gremlins. I obviously watched this around Christmas time and I did last year. Um, really big fan of this movie. I mean, this is such a popular film. I watched this over and over again when I was younger and you know, just a horror comedy type of film. A Christmas movie as well. And really happy to have the still book of this. You know, it's got the three sort of rules there. Uh, no light, um, don't put them in water, and obviously don't feed them after midnight, and it's just got the gremlin there as well. Sorry for the glare here, it's a bit of a pain, but you can see the main gremlin there, the white stripe with a the chainsaw there. And I just talked about this movie, but I had to get the still book as well, because I got this really cheap on eBay, that is The Hustler, so, you know, I've just mentioned a little bit about it already. You know, Paul Newman loved this movie, so now I've got two copies, the Digibook and the still book. Can't complain, The Hustler. Uh, next one, I actually haven't seen this movie yet. That is It, Chapter Two, uh, still 4K still book here. I actually really enjoyed the It movie that came out a couple of years ago, the first one. Enjoy the TV movie as well. I heard this one isn't as good, but I'm gonna leave that opinion until I've watched it um, because, you know, some people like different things. So that is It, Chapter Two. I hope to watch this in the coming months. There you go, nice. Pretty nice still book there, there's Pennywise the Clown there. So yeah, really nice one. Then we come on to a franchise that I really enjoy a lot. This franchise started in 2015. It's a great action franchise, probably one of the best of the last decade, and that is the John Wick franchise. And I actually end up getting all the John Wick films now on 4K Blu-ray still books. So that's the first one, really good. Um, if you love action movies, uh, Keanu Reeves uh, really brought, relived his career in a lot of ways, these films, John Wick. Uh, we got the second one here, probably my favorite out of the trilogy. Um, I know they're gonna make a fourth one next year. Uh, there it is, John Wick's so nothing at the back, but yeah, love that front with John Wick chapter two. So, favorite one. And then the one that came out last year, this one's actually from, those two were from Zavi. Um, this one's from JB Hi-Fi, that's the third one, chapter three. Um, yeah. So a nice picture of the dog there, well. So really nice looking still book, John Wick. So love that franchise. Um, next movie is a, my favorite movie of last year. Talked a lot about it on a hangout. Um, that is Joker with Joaquin Phoenix and Robert De Niro. Obviously, I really hope Joaquin wins the Oscar in the coming days. I really think he will. This performance is so, so good. I haven't seen a performance like it. This is a really dark and disturbing movie about a guy who has a mental illness. And um, yeah, such a great origin movie, but it's a lot more than that. It's, as I said, a lot about mental illness and the struggles people go through who don't have a lot of opportunities or any sort of help in a lot of ways. So yeah, Robert De Niro, fine sort of supporting performance for him. The music in this is really haunting and just a great film. And I know, I think there's talk of a sequel of this. I don't know, really know how I feel about it because I feel this is one of those sort of once off type movies. I don't know, but I guess we'll see in the future. But yeah, Joaquin, let's hope he wins that Oscar. Um, great looking still book as well. That is Joker. And then coming along, this is pretty interesting. This one comes after Joker because that is King of Comedy. And there's a lot of inspiration uh, that Joker took from this movie. And this is a good film. I actually watched this on New Year's Eve. Um, I actually never seen it before. Really great movie. I love this one a lot. Obviously directed by Martin Scorsese. Um, maybe one of his more underrated films. Uh, this is a really great uh, performance from Robert De Niro. He's sort of an up and coming. Uh, he wants to be a comedian. So he studies um, Jerry Lewis, who's a really famous comedian is all you guys know and yeah great film and as I said probably one of Robert De Niro's best acting performances this and Taxi Driver love this movie a lot and this is one of those films I'll probably watch uh, once or twice a year I had a lot of good fun of it that is king of comedy and then another movie that I've really enjoyed over the years I love my sort of vigilante type movies That's, you know characters a little bit more mysterious that is Leon the Professional uh, this is a 4k still book that came out recently on Zavi really nice feel there's a young Natalie Portman one of her first earlier roles uh, you got Jean Reno who played Leon this sort of hitman him and uh, Matilda played by Natalie Portman sort of team up and uh, yeah Gary Oldman plays this really memorable villain role and yeah, it's a really nice uh, still book there and really nice, really great film. So, love this film. I think it came out around 1994, directed by Luc Besson. Yeah, great stuff. Leon the Professional. 
And then I said, I showed this movie already in my 4K set, but I had to do double dip because I really love the still book of this. That is Once in Time in Hollywood. So, you know, I've already talked about it, but I actually really like this still book. Shows the three main characters. You've got Leo as Rick Dalton, uh, Brad Pitt as Cliff Booth, and of course, Margot Robbie as Sharon Tate there. So that's really cool. And obviously you got the dog who's pretty important in this movie if you've seen it. So there you go. Yeah, nice looking still book. Got this one from JB Hi-Fi. And yeah, love it a lot. So there you go. And then the final item in this uh, big haul movie haul video is Robocop. I got this movie, I think around October, November. This one just came out on Arrow Video. So it's the Arrow Video Limited Steelbook. Um, not really sure how limited it is now, but yeah, really looking forward to watching this new restoration because I uh, haven't seen this movie in quite a while. So it's going to be Good to see it in a great restoration. Really nice looking still book there. Um, Arrow do a great job on these still books. So yeah, there you go, Robocop. So that, that's it guys. That completes the big movie haul video. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Let me know all your thoughts on everything that I picked up and I hope to see you very soon. Take care guys.